January the 4th, 19, no, January the 4th, 2019. This is me, Paul Sellers, on my bike, and this is my 69th birthday. And uh, I'm looking out over the fields and looking to a new year, really. And I thought this was a good way to start my birthday. So here I am keeping myself fit for another year, hopefully. And uh, I'm more than happy to take you on my journey over the next year. Already in the last two days, we've had so many developments that I'm looking forward to carrying on. Okay, Google, play. came out of a year that was wonderful um, I hope it was good for you I know we all go through difficult times and have things that we've got to deal with but this is a time when uh, winter comes and we start planning for things and that's what I'm doing here did you notice this was the air dryer uh, the clothes dryer that I made and I converted it a little bit to make a drawing board from it and it really works perfectly. So if you didn't want an air dryer, I mean a clothes, an airing dryer, you could do what I did and just make a platform that rotates and you can lock it off wherever you want it to and get the angle right. This is part of my forward planning. I'm working on a plan here because this plan is for a particular project that I'm going to be filming this coming week and I think it's going to equip woodwork as this particular element of it. It's going, to partic it's going to reach out to perhaps another part of the audience that hasn't yet joined us and um, so I've made this project, I've pulled it together so that um, actually it would appeal to people who have not adopted hand tools yet, but want to. So I've been working on this for months, just pulling the idea together, trying to work out the idiosyncrasies of it. And uh, I'm so excited about it. So I've got my, whoops, I've got my drawings over here, already completed. And um, so I've been working on that, and then I've got my plan together for the stages of how I do this. And, um, and now I've just got my material list coming in here. I've got this all mapped out so that I can give you a PDF or whatever we need to. It may not be a PDF, we may not need it, we may just do it in the filming. Um, but I think it's going to pull this together and, and then from this we're going to build and build and build and build for the next few years on a series of projects that I think will really enhance your woodworking. Okay, you will play quieter. So, uh, I think it's, um, I just feel so excited about it. I don't even know how to explain it really, express it, you know. And, uh, and also, I appreciate all your comments about me going out into the woods and along the rivers and, and everything over the past years, you know, a few months since we started vlogging. Um, I really appreciate your support and uh, thank you as well for 
all the birthday wishes that you sent in, you know, they were just, it was overwhelming and um, I, I just thank you for that. But I want to thank you for the support, the support that, you know, has said this work that you're doing is well worth it and it's changing my life, it's changing our lives, it's changing lives around the world. This is um, just after lunchtime on Thursday and I've just arrived in my native town of Stockport. This is the town where I was born, this is the railway station and um, I'm looking forward to spending some time with my grandchildren and my uh, daughter. I'll be able to open up the skies of my childhood and show you where I began my journey. My early introduction to nature was in these reservoirs. These were what they call Sykes's reservoirs, and this was where the Sykes's, I think they made bleach. And um, they always had wildlife on these reservoirs. And uh, I used to come and um, paddle in these and uh, get my tiddlers and my tadpoles from here and um, keep them in jars until they became little froglets and uh, there was a big beech tree here so these uh, silver birches weren't here then but there's something magical about coming back and uh, this was the birth of my interest in nature this was where I started my mornings every morning when I was around 11 years old I would do a newspaper round I did it for years and um, I used to think that the uh, shop owner was very kind, Mrs. Warris, because she would let me borrow the money from what I would earn on my newspapers to buy sweets during the week. But she kept a tally on how much I spent. And at the end of the week, I never picked up any wages because I always ate my wages in candies that I bought from her store. This whole area here was where my um, training ground was for my apprenticeship, which um, it's kind of sad really in some ways but it was just a beginning and I've extended that now uh, and I love what we're accomplishing through the work but imagine it starting here right in the middle in downtown Stockport and uh, it's kind of neat really to come back and see it and be able to share it with you but all of these little kiosks had the goods for sale in these were the more affluent, more permanent um, marketers. I think it's still very beautiful, really, in its way. The Angel Inn. Yeah, some things never change. I like this. Get creative here. What does that mean? Please come in. Shall we go in? Have a look. Well, we're all graduates from Manchester School of Art. Ah. So upstairs there's all like project and um, like studio spaces. So we've got lots of graduates upstairs making whatever they may be making. Woo. From fine art to jewellery to yeah, hats. Wow, 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 wow. Um, and we've just opened the shop down here now. So we've set the shop up. It's all stocked with works from graduates and So do you have to be a graduate from the school? Okay, fine. It's kind of like It's a, it, uh, definitely, I understand the need for it. I've just been blogging recently on how difficult it is because young people, you know, you leave university and you haven't really got the experience. I love the idea that, you, you, that you're getting this step up, really, and out yeah. there and you're putting your work out there. Yeah, and well, look, quite a lot of the people in here have never had their work at a stockist or anything, so it's... It's teaching them how to understand market, the coding, yeah, markets, yeah, yeah, yeah. pricing, I stuff like work, that. How to yeah. present your work. Workshops, uh, some are aimed at students or graduates to help them, but on the flip side, it's also a place where graduates can run their own workshops for right. the public. So wow. it's kind of helping the community and helping the graduates yeah. too. Wow, wow. 
Yeah. That's wonderful. Well done, you. <laughs> I am more fascinated about woodworking now because of what people do with it. You know, people making violins and guitars and and canoes and so many things. It's just been a, a, just a fascinating journey for me. So, you know, do what you love doing and, and follow that passion because, you know, it's... I mean, it doesn't mean it's not gutsy hard work. You, you know that by now if you've gone through your degree. But making your living... About 25 years ago, I said I was never going to work for money again. And that's what made the difference. If yeah. you don't work for money, you work for your, for the love of what you're making. You know, that's what makes the difference. Yeah. A few years ago, I started blogging and started teaching and training online. And now we reach, I don't know how, hundreds of thousands, one and a half million people a wow. month. Wow, that's amazing. So it's quite, we have a big audience. So I'm going to put this on my vlog. Oh, and uh, brilliant. Yeah, it'll be great, yeah. All, all the banks of the Mersey are on the sandstone, which isn't very hard wearing, but it certainly slows down. A little bit, a bit rugged back here. I'm not sure if I should be here really. The railway arches, that was where I used to meet my dad in the evening after school. And we went to the paper um, cardboard packing building uh, underneath the arches. It was a very derelict place. And uh, I used to bail cardboard for my dad. He used to join me and then we would work until seven or eight o'clock and then we would walk home. This is where I was born as a twin and lived my life until I left when I was 21 and get married. And um, it was my home. This, this wasn't the physical house. It's about, it's exactly the same footprint of my original house. Not a big house at all, three bedrooms. Six children, mum and dad, and um, I, I was—I had a very happy childhood here. This is a remarkable thing, really. This is Stockport Divisional Headquarters for the Police Service, and and it's um, really right on the spot where I used to play as a child. Uh, and actually, where the houses are now used to, was the city dump, the municipal dump for Stockport County Council. And that was my playground, that was where I used to come and get my bike parts and, and root around and dig into the, under, into the uh, underbelly of the dump to find dump parts. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm really quite shocked to find that this is here. I was a member of the Stockport Police um, Service. It was in Greater Manchester at the time, but I was based here at Stockport. This is where I did my foundational training in police work. Even though the whole time I worked as a police officer, I was always woodworking. I put in as many hours in woodworking as I did in doing my police work. And, um, and then as I grew and became more independent, I, I was able to leave the police uh, force. My heart was never as a police officer, even though I did my best in my duty. And um, so this is uh, quite fascinating to see this because this didn't link through to this side of the railroad tracks at that time. This wooded area is not really wooded. This was the allotment and right down here at my feet, I, there was a, a fence here, still is a fence here, but it was a tall six foot, seven foot fence. And on this left hand side was my allotment when I was 11 years old, I managed to convince the owners of the allotments, which is the railway, to let me have an allotment. And I grew veggies there as a child. I was just a child, but I had this love of gardening. We used to stand here, wait for the steam engines to come past. And we would be completely covered from head to foot in steam. And uh, uh, it, just bringing back those wonderful memories with my mum. Guys, I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. I've been working on um, writing more about band source because um, having looked through a lot of what's available, there are a lot of things missing um, from information that would help people to get started with their band source. So, um, I've been 
doing a little preparation to uh, get ready. So I've been, I don't know if you can see this, but I've been uh, doing some drawing to get prepared and, and pulling some drawings together to put together in a, a document. And it'll probably be something that you can just access uh, online mostly. Um, although I do feel like it's becoming more of a book than, uh, than a, a vlog or a, a, a something that would be, I don't want to tell me of uh, information, but I do want to have the essential information. I want people to understand what their hearts are when they come inside here and start fiddling with it and, and wondering what this does and what that does. I want to make it so transparently clear. So what I'm hoping we can do is put together the video work and the, um, the drawings and the writing and everything and bring it all together in a cohesive package because basically this bandsaw has almost all the same features as that bigger bandsaw that's five times the price. And, um, and actually this one, <coughs> seems to be working just fine so far. I've had it for a few weeks now and I've been putting it through its paces, which is why it's got dust on it, but um, uh, it's been working uh, quite well for a very miniature bandsaw. It's only a 10 inch cut. I'm actually not remembering what the, the actual size of cut was. It's actually nine and five eighths of an inch, if you're lucky. So uh, yeah, it's be it's becoming a, a pretty good bandsaw for a beginner, for somebody who, you know. But actually, it'll cut a lot of stuff, uh, a, a mass of stuff. So that's what I'm working on right now, trying to work off on what is working and what wouldn't work, that kind of stuff. But I'm, I I think this is going to be really helpful for everybody. So. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm spending this is a Saturday morning. I'm here on my own. I'm just going to start working a bit more on this to get my notes together, get my drawings together, and then uh, scan and put stuff into my computer. And then you'll be able to get what I've got. Okay, you will play some music for me. Alright, here's some music on YouTube Music. Quiet. Look. F or bad, f or real. I ride a big tall hills, big fat checks, big large bills, burn out flip like 10 car wheels, cold that. I give cross chills, 10 different looks, so my looks all kills. I get some in the mouth, I feel all grills, heat in the car, that's all so grills. Okay, Google. Play some classical, soft, gentle music. Playing 8 hours classical music for sleeping. Relaxing Woo! piano music <laughs> Mozart on YouTube music. Yeah, I'm not ready for sleeping yet. Okay, Google, a little bit louder. There we go. Yeah. 